Oh, hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework. And today we're going to be talking about the one tool that you need in your workshop that you probably do not have. That is the ENCO 105-1110 milling and drilling machine. I never thought I could use one. I never even envisioned myself owning one until one of my viewers right here on the Housework channel, and he's been a subscriber for a long time, reached out to me and said, hey, I've got a garage full of stuff. I'm trying to minimalize what's in there so I could move another project in there. And I've got these for sale. It's a pretty good deal. Would you be interested in them? And I said, uh, sure, why not? I'll take a look. Turns out he's close. He was a couple hours away. He sent me some photos. I had no way of getting them down here. I didn't have a truck or a trailer and he drove them down. His name is Scott and I appreciate you. I want you to know every time I use this mill, Scott, I think of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's changed and revolutionized the way I do my work right here in my workshop. So when I received this thing, I had no idea how much I would actually use it. In fact, I use it every day. It's one of those things where I could use my drill press, but I lean towards the milling and drilling machine. It's just simple to use. It's versatile. It's efficient. It has all kinds of features on it that a drill press won't do. It'll, I mean, it holds your work down. There's all kinds of things. So let's go over some of the features and some of the things I've done to it that actually make this thing efficient and easy to use. The first problem you're gonna run into when you're using a milling and drilling machine is how do you actually keep your work in one place while you are using it? I had the, uh, the, the luxury of having the, the vise that came with the mill. Scott brought that to me. So uh, I, I had something to start out with, but I didn't have what I have now, which is this little set of little threaded rod, nuts, bolts, T-slot holders, uh, little pieces of steel with holes in them that you can position and maneuver around to hold down odd shaped things. If you've ever used a milling machine, you know how frustrating it is to keep things in one place. Well, for 60 bucks, you can buy this little kit and it will, uh, it will work for all those little things. Pretty much anything you wanna hold down, you can do right there with that kit. And then Amazon has them. I'll put a link down in the description so you can go out and find one. Anybody that buys a mill, I would say that is a must have. You have to have something like that. Otherwise, you're going to be super frustrated trying to keep things in, in place. Even the vise itself is good, but it's only good for certain things. Things like tube steel and I've managed to make a little wooden uh, tabletop that goes in there. In fact, that's one of my projects for the future is to build that tabletop with the slot and the hold down, the, the little clamp down things. I want to make that out of steel because the wooden one is actually starting to deteriorate and uh, you know when she's drilled through it a hundred times you know it just starts to fall apart so that's in the the works for a future video project the other thing i did was i went to harbor freight and i bought all those magnetized tool trays that they sell on sale for two three four bucks a piece and i just slapped them all over the mill itself the face of it the side of it whatever so anytime i'm using something the chuck, the Allen wrench that turns the bolts that hold down the vise, chamfer bits, the end mills, the collets, all that just goes and I just slap it up there and it's ready for me when I need it. I can actually just go up there, grab it, use it, and then slap it back up there. You wouldn't believe how many tooling changes you go through when you're working on one particular part. And all those tooling changes require tools themselves to change things out. And if you've got them at the ready, it just makes your job so much simpler and easier to do. The one downside to magnets is if you're cutting steel or grinding steel in your workshop, they collect all of the little shavings. So once in a while I have to go through with a, a rag and just like clean all the shavings off of them. Totally worth having, super cheap, upgrade for any mill. Uh, you know, I highly recommend it. Now the ENCO 105-1110 is still being made and I'm not sure if it's ENCO that still makes that particular model, but Jet makes one, Grizzly makes one. They all kind of look the same and act the same. And in fact, you can find them on Amazon, believe it or not. I'll put links down in the description. I'm not sure if that's the best deal in the world or not. I don't know, but um, for the most part, I actually looked it up yesterday, Grizz, I think it's the Jet one 
that is 20, it's like $2,700 and it's free shipping. So I don't know if that's a good deal or not. And I think $2,800 gets you that. The whole mill, the table, the vise, and the stand, which to me actually seems pretty reasonable. I know that's a lot of money and it, it seems extravagant, but when you think about all of the things you can actually do with this, it makes a ton of sense to have one in your workshop. And if you're like me, you wanna be able to have the freedom to do all those projects. And sometimes I just simply don't do them because I don't have the proper tools to actually make it happen. For me, that's a game changer, having this mill. I can just walk up to it and pretty much fabricate anything I want. The other thing to consider when you're using a mill or a drill press is what liquid are you using as a cutting agent? There is only one choice, in my opinion, for cutting agents on a mill or a drill press, and that is Tap Magic. I buy it in the biggest bottle I can because I go through it a lot, but it really does make a difference. It saves your tooling, number one. It keeps your drill bit sharp, keeps your end mill sharp, and it doesn't warm up your work, meaning it's cooling as it's cutting. That is a really important feature because these things generate a lot of frictional heat and it can actually warp your work. So get the proper cutting oil and also get the proper bottle to put the cutting oil in. When you buy Tap Magic, it typically comes in like a squeezy bottle. It honestly, I don't like that. I don't like having to tip the thing over and pour it on. It works in a pinch, but it's not ideal. So what I did was I bought that goldenrod the squeeze bottle and it works perfectly. You don't have to tip it or tilt it and if it falls over, it doesn't spill everywhere. That was a really good $10 purchase, I think, on Amazon. Also, something you probably haven't thought about is keeping a really old, crappy paintbrush near your mill. And the reason is, is all the chips that are generated from whatever you're drilling and milling actually will settle down into your work. It could cause the work to bounce around a little bit or it could mar your work or you just simply can't see what you're doing. That little paintbrush, you just brush your chips away and you can see what you're doing. Yes, you can use your hands, but those chips are hot and they are sharp. So a paintbrush saves your fingertips. Now you can take it a step further and do what I did and that's keep a small little vacuum cleaner next to the mill so when you're milling out C channels and deep steel and everything settling down in there and the paintbrush can't get down in there, you just grab that vacuum cleaner and suck everything out. I like to keep my workspaces as clean as possible. And in a metalworking and woodworking shop, that's really difficult to do. So to have these little vacuum cleaners around makes a lot of sense. Now I do have a dust collection system and I love that, but I use that to vacuum up wood and sawdust and other things and i don't want metal going up into it and yes i know a little bit of metal will always make its way into that thing but i really don't want to be vacuuming up hot metal chips and that's because it could simply start a fire and that's a bad thing so we don't want that i keep an assortment of drill bits and end mills and all kinds of little things laying around in their cases right near the end mill because that just makes sense to me from a workflow standpoint. If you've got everything right near where you're working, you're going to work faster and you're probably going to be more happy because you're not digging around looking for everything. I keep a few small pieces of leather for creating a temporary soft jaw in my vise. That way, if I'm working with something I don't want marred up or squished, I can throw that leather piece in there and it gives me a nice holding surface that won't damage my work. Also, you've seen this on a lot of my tools. I use one of those sewing machine LED lights. They've got a magnetized base and they've got a gooseneck arm. You can move them all, all around and whatever you're working on, you can point it at it and they work fantastic. They're super cheap. They're like 10 bucks. You can get them on Amazon. There are links down in the description that'll take you to the one that I use. I put them on everything. I put them on my 2x72 grinder. I put them on my port of bandsaw table. I put them on my drill press. I mean, everything. For 10 bucks, every single device in your shop what, that you're using to grind things, drill things, tap things, whatever, should have one of these on it. It's super important you can see your work. And as I get older, I can't see so good anymore. So, you know, 
Grab some of those lights, it makes sense, and it changes the way you use your tools. If you got something out of today's video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you can follow along with all of the projects I've got going on right here in my workshop. There are links down in the description that will take you to my Amazon store. I have everything broken down in there in categories from personal safety equipment to the tools I use to the projects that I've got going on. You can find anything and everything that I use right there. That's a free way to support my channel. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page where you can support my work monthly. It is a fantastic way to keep me going and motivates me to create more good content for as little as $1 a month. Also, if you're not into the whole monthly subscription thing, you can buy me a coffee. I love coffee. I drink it every day, multiple times a day, keeps me going. And there is a link down in the description that will take you to a website, buy me a coffee. Dot com and it will uh, just basically connect up with your PayPal account and you can leave me a few bucks and that makes a huge difference with what I'm doing right here in my workshop and studio. Thanks again, guys. I really do appreciate you. Again, always keep moving forward. Keep building every single day. Get some workshop time. Put your feet down on the ground. Make something. Make something for yourself. Build something for yourself. Take another step forward in your progress of becoming a maker and a creator and a designer. I love this work. I absolutely love this work. I will never turn away from it. It's been my lifelong passion, working with my hands, creating and educating on YouTube. Every time I get a donation or an email or a comment, it really affirms that I'm doing the right thing and it makes me feel good about where I'm at in my progress in life. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. <laughs>